Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is One Day Today, episode 135. And before I introduce our guest today, just want to check in and say welcome. You know, why we have this space, why we even have this virtual stage is, you know, I would assert no matter who you are, where you're from, what you believe, what your what your dreams are, what you look like, what color you are, what you believe or don't believe, you have something unique. You have something unique that can lift others up, that can that can empower others in your in your family, in your community, in your world. And that's what this space is about. We 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 hold this space for for leaders in their communities and their in their world who are up to things greater than themselves. And you know, after 135 episodes, you know, it gets more and more clear that you know every journey you know starts with an obstacle. And um, you know, we we really discuss. I'll speak for myself. You know, I didn't really discover myself or my purpose until I was was kind of left with a, a lack of who am I? Why am I? Why bother? What what am I doing on this planet, on this spinning rock? Like why am I here? Like what is this all about? And you know, it's it's kind of it's inspiring to be, you know, with so many amazing people who who have joined us on the stage because every story is from someone different and different circumstances, a different, different culture, different, different things they've gone through and experiences. And every time it's when they go through something in their lives, they discover themselves, they discover their purpose and they discover something greater than themselves. And, you know, that's why we hold this space. And I'm really excited about our guest. I'm just going to jump right in. I'm excited about our guest today. Please welcome to the stage, everybody, Al Wynant. Welcome, Al. Hi, Abram. It's so great to be here. What an amazing introduction. Thank you for being with us. I, uh, I already, I mean, we've already had a few conversations, and I know a few things I already want to ask you, but I want to first let you just jump in and, and share, share your story. So without further ado, Al, if you're ready, the stage is yours. Thanks, Haber. And it's, it's interesting as you're open to this conversation, how what you're sharing is so close to my heart. And being here and having 134 people before me have been here, I mean, it's just an amazing group of people. And what you're trying to accomplish is astonishing. So hats off, hats off to that. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm happy we were connected by mutual acquaintance a while back. And sort of learning about your mission also made me think a little bit about why I'm here. And I'm, I'm sort of the person that when I see a lost puppy, I want to adopt it. You know, when I see a homeless person, I want to help that person. I've always had this need in my life to help people. And I was at a stage of my life, you know, in my sort of late 40s, early 50s, and I just really haven't felt good for a while in the big scheme of things. I haven't felt that I was reaching a purpose or had a purpose for, 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 for a lack of other definition. And I've been looking, you know, what is my why? What do I want to do? And I've always had this thing in me where I wanted to make a positive impact in the world by helping as many people as possible. But figuring out what that really was was really challenging. I mean, I'd served on boards, I've volunteered, I've had a development director job. I've always sort of been in the, in the world of helping people, but never at scale, so to speak, as we say in the business world. And part of my mission has always been as many people as possible. So coming to what that was, was, was quite challenging in figuring it out and having some hits and some misses, you know, through the other jobs and through the other things I was doing. And and one day, about two or three years ago, we were sitting in a coffee shop in Boulder here in Colorado. I'm in Denver. Um, we're sitting here and kind of thinking through this, thinking through this. And suddenly this light bulb went off. You know, I'm a big, I'm a really big fan of coaching. And I can see the positive impact that coaching has made on my life. And it was sort of this light bulb went off going, what if we can make coaching available to everyone? What if we could make it you know, scalable, accessible, affordable, equitable, et cetera? And so I kind of had figured out my why. It's like, oh my God, we can connect coaches with people in the world who, who can use this. And it was a really interesting journey. So if, if anybody who is here who 
as, a, as an entrepreneur who started a business, you know, starting something new from scratch is very challenging. You know, from a, you know, where do you start? Who is, who are the people around you? What obstacles? How many times are you going to hear no? All of that sort of stuff that you have to deal with um, is really, really challenging. And especially, you know, if your idea is something that is very different than what's already out there. So some of the um, some of the challenges we had and, and, and may still have in some ways is coaching is something that is very personal and is generally delivered, you know, one on one. And so we're changing the paradigm of how do you make coaching available to everyone? So going from one on one, we go into virtual group settings via via technology. So um, to make it affordable and scalable and so on. So just the simple thing of changing the paradigm of coaching, incredibly challenging. Um, how how you work with coaches on how to even deliver coaching in that new kind of concept, very challenging. How you um, find the resources to build the technology so it's accessible and it works and so on, very challenging. So on a, on a day-to-day basis, um, you kind of get up and you really, really, really have to believe in what you're doing. And you really, really have to believe that what you're doing is going to make a positive difference. And so um, for me, that's what I do, I know is going to make a positive difference in the lives of many. And so that's that's why I'm here. And so, I'm not here to tell you how to do this in the big scheme of things, but I want to make you think a little bit through, you know, how you how you go through this kind of, you know, and, and you know, starting a, it's starting a business, it's having a goal in life, it's starting a family, it's all of these different things, it's starting something new. You know, where do you begin? And, 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 and for me, it was thinking, you know, what really is my goal in life? What do I really want to accomplish? And my, my mission had always been, I want to, you know, make a positive difference in the world by helping as many people as possible. And it is going to be most likely something completely different for you. You know, and how do you come to the conclusion of what that is for you if you don't know already? So um, we really, we really sat down and you know wrote that down on a piece of paper, and then threw a lot of ideas. What does that really mean? You know, is that becoming this job? Is it becoming involved with that organization? Is it becoming this or that? You know, you have to kind of find what makes you happy. What is going to motivate you on a daily basis to do that? You know, it doesn't have to be a job. It could be just something that you do in the weekend or at night or with your family. But that has been, if you don't have that, if I don't have that, if I didn't have that motivation, I probably wouldn't be here today um, because this is a very, very challenging um, journey and adventure. I love to call it an adventure because it is an adventure. Um, But figuring out how to do that, um, I think it's also really important to surround yourself with people who are your supporters. Um, and supporters, I'm just meaning people who you say yes to you and stuff like that. It's people who can, when you have a bad day, you can go to and you can have a conversation with them. It is with people who are your friends who are going to give you real feedback and not tell you what you want to hear. It's very easy to be in a position like this and be surrounded by people who would tell you what you want to hear, who do or what they think you want to hear. You know, it's, I, I love to surround myself with people who tell me um, what I may not want to hear, which can be painful sometimes, but you also learn, you know, to take the benefit, the positive of that and, and use that in making yourself or your company or your product and what you're doing stronger. So surrounding yourself with a core group of people um, that can support you is so important. And I'm very, very lucky in my, in, in, in Gomo here that I have my co-founder who is part of that. I also have an amazing group of advisors who have, you know, people who have asked, I'd love to be for you to be, for you to be an advisor, you know, um, and, and share stuff with me and have conversations and think through things. And I'm obviously, you know, I always like to, like to joke, I'm not just a CEO, I also use my product. I'm also the beneficiary of having, you know, dozens and dozens of coaches at my fingertips on a daily basis that 
you know, can help me. And I obviously have friends as well. And so I think having that around you is, is, is so, so key as part of that. And I think another thing that I find very important in my life and which can be a challenge because I'm the typical sort of squirrel and my brain is off somewhere or there's a different project or there's something else that pops up or, you know, there's a call or there's a meeting. And so my brain gets very, very easily distracted. And yes, we do have a coach for that, but it's finding the tools and the techniques and the mindset that can keep you focused. And for me, in my job and what I do, that is sometimes one of the hardest things to do because there are so many areas that you get pulled through on a daily basis. But also inside of that, you're on huge screens with lots of things popping up that easily distract you. So finding a way to um, be be focused is really, really, really important as well because there's only that many hours of the day um, that you can accomplish things in. So doing that um, is, is really important to me as well. But <clears throat> having my long-term goal in mind for the company and for what we want to accomplish is really, really that key, that key thing that I want to do. And another thing that I'm very, um, that I'm a big fan of in, um, and this is kind of an interesting thing to talk about and sometimes a little bit hard to talk about. You know, I believe that if you look at traditional coaching, um, and I believe I can say this, um, generally you sort of see that 50-year-old, you know, gray-haired white guy being a coach. But that's not the reality of the world out there. That is not what the world looks like. And, and I can say it's because I'm, I'm fortunate I don't have gray hair, but, you know, I'm the 50-plus-year-old white guy, you know, sitting here. Um, but I, I really, I really strongly believe that <clears throat> coaches that work with an audience have to reflect the audience because the audience has to recognize themselves in the people they work with. They have to have shared experiences. They have to look at someone going like, they get me. They've been there. They've gone through these experiences. And coaching is trust. And I think in any business, in any business it's about trust. How do you build relationships? So for me, having a diverse team of people to work with is also really, really important. And when I say diverse, that's a very big picture of diversity. And that means, you know, ability, sexuality, skin color, nationality, religion, everything under the rainbow, because that level of diversity brings some really, really interesting voices around the table. And you have to be open to have those conversations and be vulnerable and be authentic in those conversations because it really, really makes your, your team, your individuals, your company stronger when you bring those diverse voices to the table. I think it's so important um, to, have, uh, to have that as part of it. So um, I feel like I'm starting, starting to ramble a little bit. <laughs> um, I never get to talk as much about myself in the big scheme of things. Um, but that's 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 a little bit about my history. And, I, and as I as I go back to, I want to rescue every puppy, and I want to you know help every homeless person I see, et cetera. I feel that with with what I've what I'm doing right now, I I, I feel that I'm meeting that my why of you know how can I make a positive impact in the world by helping as many people as possible. And you know it's just not X amount of people who are using what we're doing. It's also um, you being able to track the efficacy rate, all of that. And part of part of what we do also is is giving back to the community. Um, so one of the things, <clears throat> excuse me, that we're doing on December 8th is, and I invite everyone who's, you know, as you're doing your New Year's resolutions out there, because you know that's a little sticky note that goes on the refrigerator and in two weeks you'll forget about it. You know, we're doing this free um complimentary or well, free and complimentary the same thing uh, a virtual conference about um go we call be more days where we bring coaches in who are going to help you and provide you with the tools so you can start 2023 on the right foot and have the tools and the resources to be successful throughout the whole year so it'll be a great great um virtual conference and resource for you to benefit from as part of that. So you can sign up at bemoredays.com for that as well. And we do a lot of these, you know, things for the community again, because it's, even if you don't use our services, we love to give back to the world, to the community, to help people again, ties to our mission and to my personal mission. So that's a, that's a little bit um, about myself. 
Um, if there's any questions, I think we can put them in the, in the comments or something. Uh, feel free to share those with me. Happy to answer those. Um, but that's um, a little bit about my history, what I do, why I do it, and maybe a few, hopefully a few little tidbits here of information that can help you as well as you are kind of on your own journey discovering what you want to do, where you want to go, and what your positive difference in the world is. Thank you so much for sharing, Al, both your journey, but also your mission and vision. And, you know, you, I, I just acknowledge you as someone who's has such a deep compassion, like a bottomless well of compassion and how you've built your own, you know, business and career out of empowering others. And I, and I just applaud you and acknowledge you for that. Cause it's, it's a, it is a big daunting thing to, to take on. So, I mean, speaking for myself, it's bit to take on, you know, being able to support the world and everybody who, who needs coaching and everyone who need who's, who's willing to put to actually, to face themselves and to actually, you know, that takes something. And I, and I can, I relate and I can resonate with a lot of what you said. Um, but you. like one of the things that, you know, it comes to mind, cause I specifically like talking about coaching, you know, you know, I, I, I've been a coach the last, I guess, unofficially for a few years, but officially I've, I've done some coaching myself for, um, last several months and that this is kind of a new thing for me but one of the things i love is empowering people it's just like any kind of whether it's a life coach or a sports coach like you're basically holding a space for someone to show up in their own power and their own you're not doing it for them you're teaching them how to fish and what like what are some of the like what i because i hear you really are fulfilled in in giving people that um, access to their own power and to their own freedom. But like, what is it that, you know, like, what, what do you see the, that you lead, like your clients and the people that you work with, like, what, like, what do you tell them when somebody's actually, they don't know if they need coaching or they don't know, like they know something's wrong. Something's in the, they have barriers, but they don't quite know how to get there. Like how do like, where do you begin when somebody is like, they're searching for, for some solution somewhere or some fix, but they don't know where to, like, what do you say to someone who's really looking? So it's an interesting question. So the first thing I always say is like, what keeps you up at night? Mm -hmm. And everyone is going to say, oh my God, there's this, um, financial issues or wellness issues, or I'm just having, I'm, in, I'm having a fight with my girlfriend, my boyfriend, you know, all of these different things. It just keeps you up and it just goes in your brain. And it's like, so what do you do about it? Well, you know, I'll go talk to a friend. So they go talk to their friend. Their friend will, you know, have a shoulder to cry on. They'll have maybe a meaningful conversation. But that's that one friend. And so think, think about it in the coaching perspective. So now you suddenly have, if you work with an individual coach, you have a friend. Or if you use our app, you have 50 plus friends, you know. But now they're all, these, these are trained professionals. Now, they're not going to tell you how to fix the problem. They're going to make you think through what you're going through. And they're going to make you think through, you know, my favorite coaching question is, what's your role in that? Because you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> I said this. So you think you think through these issues that you're dealing with. You get you get guidance. You get, you know, really a lot of questions about what, you know, what your role in that is. And you come to your own conclusions and you come to your own plan your own game plan on how to fix those so coaching is not diagnostic it's not therapeutic we never talk about the past we always want you to focus on the future and it's basically you know not about giving you the tools it is giving you the questions it is giving it's making you think and it's done by profession because your friends are going to make you think but your friends are also going like yeah your girlfriend's really kind of uh -huh. and they're going to start interjecting their own personal feelings in it so right. if you talk to a professional that doesn't happen so they're really going to make you think you know very objectively through things where you can walk away from a coaching session you go like wow this is really helpful i was in a i was in a coaching session um a couple of days ago and it was about you know relationships and so how do you communicate in your relationships? Because it's very easy to, to your partner, to your husband, to your wife, to kind of respond and say something and go, oh, 
I shouldn't have said that. You know, but kind of thinking through, you know, my Twitter is coaching, so it's going to make me think through how you respond to certain things. So coaching really is is an incredible tool to make you think through what you're doing and, and how, to, how to kind of plan going forward as part of that. So does, does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, a lot of what you're saying is I feel like I can, I, I can relate with, and I think distinguishing coaching, you know, from a consultant or a teacher, it's, it's, you know, it's, or even just a service, you're hiring someone to do something coaching. I love that you said it's like, it's in the inquiry, it's in the questions. And I think that is like, that is what it's about. It's, you know, usually what's in the way of our, whatever we're committed to in our life, whether it's like, it's a career goal, a relationship goal, you know, a spiritual expression or freedom, you know, it's, it's always, the barriers are always hidden in our blind spots. You know, what we can't see, we, mm-hmm. we can't see that we can't see. And a, a lot of the time, you know, if we knew the solution already, we would have, we, or if, if we knew what would have made a difference, we already would have done it. So it usually takes somebody in an objective outside perspective or just inquiry. Like, like I love your question. What's your role in that? Cause it really makes you look, it's like, huh? Like what's the common denominator and all these, and all these things. It's like, Oh, it's me. <laughs> it's like, I, mm-hmm. I, I can either be in the way or I can be, you know, or I can see the, the, the opportunity in the obstacle. And it's, so it's a power, it's a powerful practice to, I mean, it, it takes something to want to be coached. You know, you have, it takes courage to actually see and face the things that hold us back. And, and what in your journey in your life, you know, was there a moment where you knew, like, w- like, was there, was there like a aha moment when you knew you needed coaching or, or a moment that you discovered something about yourself that allowed you to have access to this wisdom that you're now sharing? It's interesting as I've worked on this on this company, I've I thought back of, of an experience God, 15, 20 years ago or something. And so this may surprise you as a 21, 22, 25 year old, I knew everything in the world and nobody could tell me, nobody could tell me anything. And so <laughs> but I think we're all like that when we're that age. Um, and I had the opportunity to meet with with a life coach and I was skeptical. I was like, I don't know. What's this person going to tell me? I don't already know. And so, but I give in and I went to the session. And as I'm sort of reluctantly sitting there in the session going like, oh, great. You know, this this person, great person, you know, asked me that question because I was dealing with something. I, to, be, to be honest, at this day, I don't even remember what it was, but I was probably unhappy about something. And so I tell him the story and he, and then he asked the question, what's your role in that? And I had the answer immediately. And it was like, <laughs> you know, it's like, wow, this stuff actually works. He never told me what I should do about it. He just, he just basically let me answer that question and talk for a while. And I just came to my own conclusion of what I knew what my role was at that particular time. And it wasn't, it wasn't, an easy fix, so to speak. And so that was a moment I realized, well, this is a really valuable tool. There is something, this is something that can make a difference to people, you know, but like you said before, you have to be open to it. If you don't, if you're not open to it, you know, if you're not open to learning, you're not going to go to a workshop. If you're not open to, you know, um, to coaching, you're not going to go to a coach. And that's just the reality. So you have to have a sense of openness you have to have a sense of vulnerability um, and you have to have a sense of being able to, to share a little bit with, with a coach. So, and that's, you know, somebody asked me that a couple of days ago in a different conversation because it's not easy for everyone to open up and say, here's my problem. What do I do about this? And so that's why, you know, um, not that I want to particularly just talk about our product the whole time, but you know, what's, that's why we make it all very, you know, um, private and anonymous. Where somebody who is not comfortable sitting in the circle and go like, "Hi, my name is Alan. I'm whatever that may be," you know, they can do it. You know, behind the anonymity of of the app and be be able, and you know, have access to coaching. So that's really important as well because there's just this like, are you able to be coached? But also, 
are you vulnerable enough? Are you open enough? Are you able to even go to a coach and share? You know, there's so many different layers to this that you have to think about. So, um, so yeah, so um, that was my my first coaching experience. And now, obviously, I have the benefit of many, many coaches in our own company. So I, I, I try to go to a handful of sessions um, that, that I can, I can um, learn something in on a weekly basis as well. So beautiful i i definitely i get it and i love i love that and it's it's so it's so simple in that way when you just when it's like when we actually can frame reframe our own role in our own bo both our own possibilities but also our own barriers you know it's like e every time that we say i i don't know how or i can't do this we're speaking from a place of lack of fear of mm -hmm. I would say inauthenticity because when we identify with the the identity of the I that doesn't know how and isn't good enough is has opinions has thought you know when we when we identify that we we, we give our power away and you know I think some time and time again I, I, I when I see people maybe having breakthroughs it's because they're willing to look like like what you did when you're first you know you knew everything in the world you know, you, you, no one can tell you anything, but it's 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 never in the answers where we actually find, you know, our mm -hmm. power. It's always in the question, the inquiry. That's why, you know, I so I love, you know, I'm very I'm a big fan of Socrates in that way. I love I love the que a powerful question will will not only bring you closer to the answer or truth, but it actually it's in that inquiry that we continue to grow. You know, if, if as soon as we have everything and we don't need like no one can tell us anything and no one can contribute to us. We're actually trapped in our own mental, our own projection of the world, according to our mind's eye. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> I think, I think mindset is so important. I mean, it, it doesn't make sense to be ridiculously positive about it, you know, like constantly like, like, Oh, everything's great. Everything's wonderful. Cause there's like, you know, there's sort of that toxic positivity too, that goes on. But if you if you can have a positive mindset that's tied to to goals and to objectives and so on, I think it's a beautiful mindset to be in um, because it's, it it reframes your thinking. And so we have so I've always um, some mindfulness and mindset is such an important thing. But so many people, you know, um, think through this is like ooh. Mindfulness, that's a bit, that's a bit of woohoo stuff, you know, <laughs> but in the, in the big scheme of things, it's, you know, mindfulness, we call it soul here at, at our company, you know, it is such a part of everything else, because if this isn't healthy, and you, it doesn't, it, your body isn't healthy, your mind is not healthy, your relationships aren't healthy, so you have to work on all these different layers, that's why, that's why we call it holistic coaching, because it's not just, you know, mindfulness coaching. It's not just go sit in the corner and breathe. You know that doesn't solve problems. It makes you relax for thirty seconds, but it's not going to solve the problems. So how do you how do you look at all of these aspects of somebody's life around you know life, soul, wellness, and work because they all hang together. Because if you don't have you know wellness, mental wellness, physical wellness, your life isn't in order. You're not going to show up for work right. So that's going to impact it there. It's, you know, so it all sort of hangs together. So that's why I think it's really important to to have access to all of those types of coaches because it's you know one day you, know, you can wake up today and you can have a specific issue that you need to deal with and you know most people will have one coach to work with you know we want to make sure you have access to many because today you wake up and there's one issue you're dealing with but tomorrow you may have a completely different issue you're, you're dealing with so how do you make that accessible and you know um, and equitable that's really important to us right there, there's there's like the quadrants of our lives, you know, our home and environment, our relationships with ourselves and others, our, you know, you know, our career and our finances, you know, and our health and well-being and our happiness. And like, mm -hmm. it's so what's interesting, and this is actually kind of a segue to my next question, but it's interesting to me that when you focus on an area that's not overtly connected to what the problem is, a lot of the time, you know, it's, it's like, you know, you're struggling your finances. If you actually focus on your house, home, and well-being, kind of like you're saying, if your 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 space and your your environment, it actually will impact every other area of your life. You don't even you don't even think about it that way. Yeah. 
Um, but my my question is, you know, I, I've dealt with this a lot with some with some clients, but I think everybody has some version of this when they're looking for support and coaching. Um, because again, if we knew the answer or the solution or even the question, we wouldn't be seeking support. But so this is my question is, so what do you guys say to people who say they want something like their words are, I want more money for my clients, but you hear there might be something deeper that might not even be in their peripheral. You know, how do you, how do you deal with listening for what really makes a difference for someone when they might not even know that, or they only know a, a one slice of it and they have that there's more digging to do. So I will have a disclaimer here first. I am not a coach. I work with a lot of coaches. So my answer is more going to probably be more of a personal <laughs> answers versus a coaching answer. So right. but we do have a coach for that. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, as a, for, from a coaching perspective, it really comes down because I think most people, and I think I've had this in my own experience, I've had this as well. So, you come to the coach with a perceived problem. This is what I'm thinking. This is my problem. This is what I want. You know, but then the question is, but why? Mm -hmm. So the coach really has to do some digging as to the why. And so, and this is, I like to throw this, I like to throw this around, no, not throw this around, um, turn it around on coaches. So when I ask a coach, why do you do what you do? 99% the answer comes back, oh, I just love to help people. I'm like, well, you wouldn't be a coach if you didn't want to help people. This is like, why do you do what you do? What's, why are you doing this? Where does this come from? What were your life experiences? So it's that always digging, making them think through the process. So when, you, when somebody comes to a coach with, here's my problem, I want to fix it, you know, I think a very large percentage of the time, there needs to be a lot of digging, a lot of conversation, a lot of awareness and um, openness of the, of the, of the coach, of, of the learner, as we call them, to kind of dig deeper. As a why, because first of all, I want to make more money. Could simply be I need to survive. I just need to, you know, need to be able to pay all my bills. That's not the wrong. That's not the wrong answer. That's the right answer for that person. For so for somebody else, that answer maybe maybe something completely different. And you know, it's 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 funny you bring you you touch on that subject. And one of my, I have lots of favorite questions in job interviews. <laughs> but but one of my one of my favorite questions in a job interview is why do you work? And very few people kind of give me an honest answer at first, or they don't know what the answer is. Maybe, maybe they just don't know what the answer is. Some people will be very, very straightforward, and they will say, I need a job. I need to pay my bills. Perfectly fine answer. Nothing wrong with it. Some people will say, you know, great. I want to retire early and sail around the world. And my answer is like, so how can we make you earn that kind of money? Because that's going to take you a lot of money to do that. And this particular job you're interviewing for is not going to pay that kind of money. So, so, so you, you dig a little bit deeper. So I think so I, I think in the job interview, it's going like, hmm, maybe I'm coaching there. Um, but it's it's part of it's just constantly asking questions because I think people, you know how you say gut feeling or you know it in your heart? I think when people have a question, I think many times they know in their heart if they actually – Sorry, um, um, they, they they know they know in their heart what the answer is. You just have to kind of pull it out of them as part of that. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. It's again. It's it's in the inquiry that where where the where the adventure happens. Where it's in that mystery of what I do, what I have. You know, something I'll ask. You know, myself, but also others who you know are pursuing coaching is you know what. What, what is it that, how do I say, I, 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 not, it totally left me, but it's how, like, if you were, what, like, what would it make available to you if you had, you know, if you had those, that, if you were making that money from the clients, what would it, what, what would you get to do? Where would you get to travel? What, and I think it's having that, what you were saying earlier about, it's not about the past. I mean, it's, it's very much releasing and completing the past, but also holding a space and creating a future to live into that inspires them to the and touches them to the core of their being where they see their actions are taking are, are manifesting 
a, a step closer to what their what lights them up in their heart and you know creating that life and the behaviors and patterns in their life and habits that allow them to live into a future again that inspires them and it's it's interesting when you look at that and the way you're talking about it right now all of these actions tie to tie to energy mm-hmm. and so i've learned as of some of our coaches as well so that whole you know energetic that manifestation that, that outlook that vision that view of the future if you have a clear concept of that it really does help you know create actions and create connections and that whole the, the law of attraction that's a real thing and it works but you have to sometimes think through it and have a clear vision you know to to get the results you want so that's something i'm learning from our coaches as well yeah oh absolutely and so now you may think of two different questions now that we were first <laughs> The first one is, you know, so a lot of the time, you know, with co- co- well, okay, well, for, I'll start with this one. This is kind of a, a bigger inquiry. And I think you also kind of, and I, I can kind of reverse engineer an answer based on how you started. My, my question is, what is your highest aim? And I'll say, it sounds like to have every, pup, every puppy have a house and every homeless person to have food and to have a house. But what I'm, I'm just curious, like in this inquiry of, you know, what you're up to in the world and what you're committing yourself to and your work, what is your highest aim? Well, our, our mission is to help as many people as possible. So we are, without giving away trade secrets <laughs> in the conversation, <laughs> obviously that is, um, so we don't necessarily just look at the number of subscribers. So the way we look at things is, let's say you help a million subscribers you know, that's on paper looks, you have a million subscribers times X amount of revenue. And that's kind of a boring number there. But then you look at, great, how many people are the subscribers connected with? So what does their family look like? What does their work environment look like? What does their community look like? Your church look like, et cetera. So if you're helping that one person, that's going to have sort of a little, you know, that's going to have an effect on the people around them. So we track, we can track the efficacy of coaching right now. And we see that on average, our coach, our, our coachees improve, you know, in, in terms of self-reported well-being, but 34% between the beginning and end of session. So that's, that's pretty good. So we can look at how does that impact them? Now, how does that impact people under that? So we can, we look at this really big picture of improvement. So the more people you have using the app, the more people it improves, even the ones that aren't using the app, so the people around them. So we're looking at what is that What is that going to look like? How can we calculate that? So what is that positive impact on the world? Can we put a number on that? So that's something we're looking at. So we have subscriber goals in mind for, you know, a year from now, 10 years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, and so on. And so what that looks like um, are some amazing numbers. So it's looking at that's something that's important to us. Um, obviously, when we say making a positive impact, that also does, that doesn't just mean for our clients. We look at what does that do for our coaches? What does that do for our investors? What does that do for our team? What does it do for everybody who's a stakeholder in our company? So we look at everybody. And it's not just you know the users. The users are obviously a really big, important part of this. But we look at that big picture. So you can't just focus on one channel. You have to focus on everyone who's involved with, with the company. So, so yeah, so that's what we're looking at. So what does that number look like? And I can't share that number with you right now, but that's how we look at it. So what is that, what is that positive impact? What's that, what's that return of investment, so to speak, by, you know, being coached? And then how is that trickling down into the world? So through a little bit of smart, through, through smart people around me and through some AI, we can figure some of that stuff out. So and that those numbers, obviously, as we go along, because we're relatively new as a company, um, we'll get some meaningful numbers on that. So, yeah, no, I I, I get it. I wasn't ex- I wasn't expecting any trade secrets, but I, you know, <laughs> it was more, you know, with what you're up to, you know, what and you you, you did answer it, but like <clears> what, <throat> where do you see, like I guess the second part of that question is you know what do you see that world looking like but you kind of answered that and like the impact is the people that you're coaching but also the coach is but also the the people in the sphere in the social sphere of all the people involved it's like a 
Mm-hmm. Everyone's well, scratching each other's back. And <laughs> just, just, just think of it. So any anyone can download our app. You know, the regular, mm-hmm. just the, the consumer. But we also work with companies, and that's a very easy thing to track. So when you look at absenteeism right now, that's a huge issue. You know, the whole quiet quitting, all of these different things, being engaged at work, and so on. So we know that absenteeism really is caused by personal problems, mainly, you know, wellness problems, you know, fights, you know, divorce, you know, issues in the family, et cetera. People take an unexpected day off. So there's unscheduled absenteeism. That costs a company anywhere from $2,600 to $3,600 a year per employee. You know, if you have a company, if you have a company of, you know, 250 employees, it's going to cost you over $800,000. You know who your at-risk people are in the company who are going through stuff like that. Just give them access to coaching and give them access to the resources to work on it. Because as a company, you you have health insurance, you have you know you have some EPA with some other with some things there. You you, you train them how to use computers and the tools they need for work, but you're not giving them the resources to deal with the personal stuff. Just you know invest a couple hundred dollars a year. Is is three hundred dollars a year worth saving? you know, up to $3,300 a year for your company. Think about it this way. So you can really easily track that impact, you know, coaching makes for those employees at those companies. Those companies can say, we saved hundreds of thousands of dollars. And then you still have to think in replacement costs if people are quitting. So all of these different things come into play. You know, look at it at the college level, you know, the, the graduation rate for some colleges, you know, is maybe, you know, 30% of the students don't graduate, 40, 50, 60% of students. You know, if a student starts the first year and, and tuition is $30,000 and they quit after the first year, that college loses out of $90,000 in in, um, in fees. What if you invest a couple hundred dollars to support that student? Is that is the $90,000 worth the $300? So you're going to think these numbers are massive. So the impact you can make on on, on, on schools, on colleges with coaching is just astonishing. Um, and then on a personal level, of course, if you're an individual subscriber, it's harder to track. You can only look at personal and individual's well-being. But it's, it's astonishing, the numbers, uh, when, you, when you look at it that way. Absolutely. Yeah, there's a lot of ways to measure the impact. And I think, it, and I think that trajectory changes with each individual because for some people, success might be leaving college to start a, a, a startup company and <laughs> maybe right. become a, a billionaire company that's helping people there's another a, way. There's a few of those. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I bet. So you, I know you have an a, event uh, coming up at the end of the year. Um, I was going to post that. We got a link here. Do you, you want to tell us about the, the event you got have coming up in December? Yes. Uh, I think I'll be more days. And you can go to be more days.com and we do this about twice a year and it's a free free event it's virtual it's a, a mini conference and basically this particular one is is themed like i said earlier around new year's resolutions you know so many times you'll have that um you know make a new, new year's resolution right on a sticky you note know, stick it to the fridge and you know two or three weeks later you kind of forgot about it already so here we want to bring we're bringing coaches that are going to have conversations. You can ask them questions. We'll take, we'll, we'll provide you with the tools and the resources and the thinking through what those are for you and how you can set yourself up for success for the rest of the year. So um, basically um, we do this in four sessions. We start at eight Pacific time and run through noon. And then at one o'clock, we are going to have a come meet the coaches, sort of an open door, so to speak, where you can come in and meet, meet in small groups with coaches as well and get some feedback. We have four sessions and we start with a life session. We go into a soul session. We go into a wellness session and then we go into a work session and they're interactive. Um, and then basically it's just a, a lovely place to be, to learn, to be coached. And you can come to one, you can come to all of them, uh, come hang out with us and you can sign up for free at bemoredays.com. We won't spam you with anything. You'll just get the link to register. And um, that's, it's, it's part of us giving back to the community and, you know, meets our goal of helping as many people as possible. And maybe you get a little bit of a taste of coaching if you've never been coached before and you'll get the bug and you want to have more coaching in the future. So no matter how you get that. Um, so come, come, come be with us uh, that day. Uh, it's on December 8th 
from 8 a.m. Pacific time to about noon Pacific time. And then we run at one o'clock, we run a separate session, kind of come meet the coaches um, and you can come hang out and sort of have lunch with the coaches, so to speak, virtually. That's that's so cool. I love that it's it's so many different, you know, you, you cover all the quadrants of life in the different sessions. And I, that sounds like a really powerful approach because it's like, it's, it's like, it sounds like a mastermind of, of coaches and tools that work to really, you know, I think everybody's had, I, it, the myth of the, the New Year's resolution has been trapped in that. You know? <laughs> so it's really cool that you yeah. guys are doing that. I'm always hesitant to say New Year's resolution, but people are like, oh yeah, I get that one. <laughs> so, uh-huh. Yeah, no, I, I even hesitate to say it, but like that's, but everyone knows what we're referring to because the New Year's resolutions are kind of like, it's they're ironically, it's almost like what I do, what do I not want to accomplish? I'll make it my New Year's resolution, you know? That's right. It's like, it's almost what it's become. Mm-hmm. I feel. <laughs> yeah, just come, uh, come and come and sort of get the resources and tools and think through what you what you really meaningfully want to do in the next year. That's really what it's about. So, and hopefully that will give you give you all of the the the, the brain the brain um, not the brains <laughs> that gives you the different topics to think through um, and then and, and you know have a conversation around and and come up with a you know plan for the year. Let's not call it a resolution. <laughs> It's not a resolution. <laughs> we'll, call, we'll call it a contract with yourself. How about that? Yeah. Being serious? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I, I love it. So, um, well, so one thing I, you know, I want to, I want to give you an opportunity to share any, any last words, anything else you'd like to say on this whole, on how people can get coaching and how they can get, you know, connected to Ngomu and to get, you know, and I love it again. I, it's such an audacious, beautiful, um, mission to everybody should be able to afford coaching. But my, 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 one of the things I, you know, I guess I'm curious about, and you, you shared this in your story, but you know, when we, as I think this is true for coaching and in any kind of transformation, in any, any kind of leaping over obstacles that we face in the experience of our lives, you know, it's, I, I use the analogy of a mount of mountain in a valley, you know, and that, you know, life, when we're, when we're growing up, you know, we're told that life is going to be a straight line. You know, it's like, you go to school, you're going to, you're going to have, you're going to get married, you're going to have kids and you live happily like that's, and it's like, that's never, in the history of humanity, I don't think there's ever been a life that's been like that. And it's always like this and then here, and then some, then there's an accident, somebody dies and then you get that job you weren't expecting. And then you lose that job you weren't expecting. And it's like, it's, it's never, uh, you know, a linear straight, you know, arc. And I, but I, one of the things that I think is beautiful about coaching and, you know, and I, what I would assert in anyone living their purpose, whether it is coaching or they discover that through the, the, the breakthroughs that they get with, with, with the, doing the work is that the, the valleys that we climb out of, you know, the, what we discover in that journey is and can be a bridge over somebody else's valley. You know, when somebody's looking at the sitting on the top of their plateau, looking down at the valley and seeing their life like like the, the scariest, darkest place time in their life. We all have a, moments like that. But I feel like when we face something, that's the gift that we have to share, you know, as coaches. But it's also just living our purpose. Well, I think <clears throat> there's there's just has nothing to do with this, really. But it's this you know, it's just little drawing I see floating on LinkedIn now and then where it's just like what people think entrepreneurship is the straight line. And then you know, what is really is like, and it goes all the way to the top. Yeah. And so it really applies to life as well. And as a, I think a good coach is somebody who has gone through the experience, who's gone through the obstacles, faced the obstacles, overcome the obstacles that they're coaching on. So they've lived the experience and they have meaningful examples. They have meaningful, you know, they know it, they get it, it's in their bones. That is a, that is an amazing coach. You know, you don't become a coach going, you don't wake up in the morning and go like, Hmm, well, there's a few of those, but you know, I think <laughs> I'm <gonna> be a, <laughs> sorry, um, I want to be a coach. That's not, you know, that's not really being a good, being an amazing coach is like a calling. Now, you don't become a doctor because somebody tells you you should be a doctor. It's a calling. 
you don't become a great chef because you you think cooking is you know I should cook something. It's a calling. You don't become a priest if you're not called to that. Coaching is to me the same thing. You are called to being a coach. You want to make that difference in somebody's world. And I think another thing that's so important, and I'm lucky to have that around me, you know, look for people around you who can be a mentor to you, who can, you know, who, who've been there, who can, who, who you can call on. It's not a coach, completely different thing, but, you know, find a mentor, especially if you're talking work and, you know, you're talking career and that sort of stuff. That's another very valuable tool to have. So being open um, to have conversations with people who can really give you meaningful, you know, advice and feedback. Again, it's not coaching, but, you know, take you through their experiences. That's invaluable as well. So you're not going to be successful if you don't have great mentors around you. I mean, maybe you are, I don't know. But I think mentorship and coaching is such a key to success. Um, that is something you need to look into. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, no, no matter how great we are, you know, we all have blind spots and we can never really fully see. It's so easy to see it, see things that aren't working for other people or yeah. you know, like than it is for ourselves. You know, well, like, this, like I said, at 25, I knew everything. At 55, right. I go like, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's, I mean, that's the journey is, it's, it's, it's a mountain with no top. And I think that's when we think we're at the top of the mountain, that's when we actually fall that fall up, you know, down I saw, that valley. I saw this interesting little video on, I think it was LinkedIn yesterday. It was at some conference. It was the staircase. And on the bottom was a trampoline and it was a, some acrobatic artist who it was sort of the, the, what success is or not. And the guy goes up a couple of stairs, falls down, jumps, you know, jumps back up, goes up a couple of stairs, falls down, comes a little bit lower. And it went on for a while, but you know, by the time he got to the top, he kept on falling down, going back up two steps back, one step forward kind of a thing. And it was such a beautiful analogy of, you know, what is success? What is growth? What is, you know, what is that? You know, what's that top of the mountain for you? And how many right. times you're going to step back a little bit. And it's just part of life. As long as you learn from it, it's beautiful. Right. Absolutely. And I think that's kind of the, one of the deepest things, you know, in transformation and in coaching is, you know, it's when we, when we have, it's like, we're, we're akin to helping others when we have gone through that ourselves. And when we can like, when we can relate to the, I, I, I've had a coach that put it this way, said, you know, a, a coach is a sommelier for their, for their, 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 their clients pain. Like there are different conversations in their head. Like you can hear a conversation and say, I don't know about, I don't, I'm not good enough. Or I, I don't know how to do this. And you can hear, it's like, oh, you, you can hear the pain and speak to it in a way that opens us up to looking beyond the surface of just, this is hard and I give up, you know? <laughs> so true. So true. Coaching is a beautiful, coaching works. I mean, it's just it's the best, the best thing I can say. I mean, I've been lately, I've been a beneficiary of it. Obviously, having so many coaches here, and I've also it's also opened up my mind in going to different coaches that I probably wouldn't have gone to. You know, I was like, oh, this is interesting. Maybe, I, maybe I can learn something there. And and um, you know, on the personal side, because I've always, you know, coaching work. And so now my mind is much more open to coaching and the holistic side of it, where it's life, work, wellness, soul. And so I've, I've been participating in with coaches in all of these different areas. And just the impact of that has been quite powerful. Sometimes it's hard to be put into words, um, but I like to, after every coaching session, I like to spend some time reflecting on what did I hear? What did it make me think about? What am I walking away with? What's my homework, so to speak? And it's it's a, it's a beautiful thing, and it's made me realize a few things that I never thought through. Um, it's made me work through some things, um, and it's made me a better human being, I think, as well. And um, so it's I'm a, obviously I wouldn't do this if I didn't believe in what we were doing. But like I said earlier, I'm not just a CEO; I'm a client. Was not the hair guy or something from in the old? In the old days. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I I love it, and I'm really I, I'm excited to hear more about 
the lives you impact and, and the, you know, I, I, I'm excited to, for, for the clients that are, or the, the coaches, as you said, that are, that are getting the support that you're, that you're creating this space for them to be able to access. And it's just, it's, it's just a beautiful vision and mission. And I really, I'm, I'm excited to hear, you know, how, how it goes in, in the coming, in the coming months. And um, I, is there any, well, real quick, you know, before we complete here, is there any, anything like to add, but also how can people get access to, to coaching through Ngomo? It's very easy. If you go to ngomu.com, you can, there's two links there to the Android or the iPhone app. Um, you can also just look for Ngomu in the app stores, both Android and iPhone. You can download it. You can play with it for free for seven days. You have access to every coach, every coaching community. So there's no restrictions on that. You can go experience it and see what it can do for you. And if you uh, choose to subscribe after that, it's either $29 a month or $290, $209 per year. So you save you save some some money on that, so to speak. And that's actually, if you look at it at coaching, the $290 a year is generally what a good coach costs per hour. So imagine yeah, they're say, having yeah. access to over 100 coach live sessions a month um, and over 600 record, recorded on demand sessions right now. And that's growing every month as, as well. So. Um, so that's where we can where you can find it. So, and if you want to implement it for your company, feel free to reach reach me at al at ingomo.com as well. So, but thank you, Abram. This was fun. I enjoyed this actually. I was a little kind of like I don't talk about myself ever. <laughs> <laughs> this is like we're in, we're in almost an hour. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it's been such a pleasure and a, an honor to have you, and I'm. I'm excited for what you're up to and I'm excited for everybody it touches. You know, it's gonna I, I just know how much just just hearing your heart and what and how this came to be and why it came to be is just it's so encouraging and that you know anybody can afford coaching. And I and I love that because you're right, you know, two like three hundred dollars is what most coaches will charge or many coaches will charge for you know a session or two, you know, and for that for a year access to coaching and every area of your life is is such a when it's somebody who's actually like ready and, and is willing to do the work and look like i can't think of a better simpler resource to like have access to something that makes such a difference for people oh thank you thank you for letting me share that oh our pleasure well i want to thank you al for for being our guest today and we we'll definitely want to hear more in the future and have more conversations so it was fun to have you um, and I also want to, oh, any, any last words you'd like to say, Al? No, share my appreciation to you for, for letting me, letting me be here today, for letting me share about Ngomo and my passion and how we're trying to make a positive difference in the world. So thank you for that. And again, if anybody, you know, if you want to, want to um, set up 2023, uh, you know, start right, you, know, you can come join us on December 8th uh, and you can sign up on bemoredays.com. So I appreciate it. I appreciate that a lot. Thanks for thanks for thanks for having me here today. It's our, our pleasure, Al. So great to have you. And for everybody tuning in at home, I want to thank you for being here. I also want to invite you. If you have a story, you want you want to be a guest on the stage. We want to hear you. We want maybe I'm a little selfish, but I want to give you a platform to share your gifts because I want to receive it, but I also want everyone else to receive what you uniquely have and what you're up to in the world. And that's why, you know, that's why we're here on this stage is our one day's mission is bringing you and me and communities together in joyous celebration, unifying humanity in our diversity, create a better world for us all. And what our vision is, humanity is rising in a connected world with each person's unique gifts, you know, unique genius and contributions for being valued and magnified through a higher level of collaboration, producing unprecedented new realms of possibility. Thank you all again for joining us. We'll see you next time. Thanks again for Al for being with us. And everyone have a wonderful weekend. Be safe, be well. And as always, one day is today.